Do you understand what we do? We create order from chaos. We have the power to change the world. Hey everybody, how you guys doing today? It is July 21st, 2020. And this is coming out of the USA Today. Um, it's just another article that just, you know, while I'm doing research, just I just have to do a video on it because it's just, you know, as their headline says, it's very encouraging. It's very frustrating that that's what it is to me, you know. And um, But let's just get into this real quick. All right, it says, We'll need enormous numbers of Americans to test CV19 vaxes. A very encouraging 138,600 have signed up already. Y'all, that's, that's 140,000 people that have signed up to voluntarily have this vaccine put in them. Which only half will, because half will, you know, well, according to them, only half will. One half will get the placebo, but most likely they'll probably put it in all of them because they want them to have it. But... I just think it's funny that the number that they use, the 138,600, that's very close to what? 140,000, right? What do they keep saying? How many have died? 140,000. You know, I just think that that's kind of um, ironic that those numbers are so close to each other. But let's just get into this. It says, at a time when some Americans are concerned about safety of a CV-19 vax, Tens of thousands have already volunteered to help bring one into existence. You know, while well, some Americans, see, this is us. You know, they look at this. They're, let's just click on this really quick. This is us. I mean, they even have a whole article linked just for us. Bill Gates is not secretly plotting microchips in a CV vax. Misinformation and conspiracy theories are dangerous for everyone. That's us. See? That's what we're the ones they're talking about. While the United States spends billions in an all-out effort to develop a CV vax, there's concern that when there finally is one, not enough people will take it to protect the population as a whole. Even with a vax months and perhaps years away, misinformation and conspiracy theories about vaxes for CV19 are swirling online, potentially driving people away from getting vaxed when one or more become available. One of the wildest is a false story about a purported evil plan by Microsoft founder Bill Gates to use mass CV vaxes to implant microchips in billions of people to track their movement. I mean, keep, look at this. If it's so fake and everything's such BS, why are you wasting all your time on it? Why are you, the USA Today, taking your time to write an article about a bunch of us crazy idiots? Hmm. Doesn't really make sense to me. Let's get back to the main article. I'll leave the link to this one, too, because you're going to want to read it. You know, it's just crazy, though. It, it truly is. As of Monday, more than 138,600 people had signed up to take part in testing. That's why we're optimistic that we're going to be able to get the trials enrolled in an expeditious way. I think we can do what we need to do, said Dr. Anthony Fauci, Director of National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. I got an article about him I'm going to show you in just a second. The milestone was reached just a week after the National Institutes of Health launched a clinical trial network for vaxes and other prevention tools to fight the pandemic. The plan-demic. More are still needed. See? More. We need more. More of you need to come and let us put this poison in you. But the initial surge will go a long way toward filling the requirement for at least 30,000 volunteers each for the four companies that plan to launch Phase 3 clinical trials of their potential vaccines by early fall. Together, the Moderna, Pfizer, BioNTech, AstraZeneca and Inovio trials will require at least 120,000 volunteers. Do you see how they're spreading all this? It's not by you and me not wearing a damn mask. I would say it's very encouraging at this stage, said Barry Bloom, an 
immunologist and vax expert who is a professor of public health at the Harvard Chan School of Public Health. Yeah, because we're supposed to believe you, right? What? Guess what he says, though? The same thing that everyone else is saying. No one is safe until everyone is safe, until everyone has the vax. Hundreds of clinical trials for drugs, medical devices, and vaxes are going on across the United States at one time, but most are relatively small. Putting together four large trials at the same time, with even more planned to come online later in the fall and winter, is a massive undertaking. See, more to come online when? In the fall, in the winter. We have to pay attention to these parts of these articles because that's where your truth is. Okay, like I said, this all seems to be lining up perfectly with 2021, January 2021. It seems like everything, every article I read, every different, you know, piece of, you know, information that gets released or gets declassified or we find out about it seems to always have these same ending times around, you know, late fall, early winter. And tons of them are December 2020 to January 2021. And I think, obviously, we know that falls with Agenda 21. It doesn't just require volunteers, but also a robust complement of clinics, hospitals, and medical centers around the nation with staff and physicians' experience in running clinical trials. You think maybe that, you know, all their packed hospitals, right? All their packed, you know, ICUs and this and that that we, you know, found were complete BS the first time around. You think maybe that they're going to be filled with these type of people and they can say, oh, look, those are, you know, oh, they're full. Well, yeah, you're full. So if somebody goes there, they're going to be full this time. But they're not full of people that have CV. They're full of people that are getting tested or getting this vax put in them and running a clinical trial. You know, who knows? I'm just saying it, it's a possibility. <laughs> with these people, anything's possible. To make that happen, the NIH launched the CB-19 Prevention Trials Network, merging four existing clinical trials network. It launched on July 8th with a website where volunteers can sign up. I went to this. It is so long. There is some stuff in there that I want to try to put together for you in a video. It is insane how what they have to sign up for, how long it takes just for the sign-up process how many pages it is. It, it's crazy. I try to, maybe I can put a little bit in this video. I'll try to. Um, if not, I will try to get that information to you because it is important, but I'll leave that link right there as well too. If you've got a little bit of time, it's going to take some time, but there's definitely some interesting information there. The network builds on decades of worth of work creating clinical trial networks that goes back to the AIDS epidemic in the late 80s. Yeah, that Fau Fauci said, yeah, that Fauci was all a part of, right? That we know about that, how he was involved in all this. And what do you know with another thing that kills so many people, a targeted, you know, disease. And yeah, what do you know? Look where we're at again. And guess who's still the leader of this, you know, this clan? It would take literally years to build up a network that I built up over the last 30 years. So why do it? We're going to use what we have, he said. People chosen to take part will be racially, ethnically, and geographically diverse. It is in guidance for companies testing possible vaxes. The Food and Drug Administration says it wants the vax candidates to be tested in populations most affected by CB19, including ethnic and racial minorities, pregnant women, the elderly, and people with underlying conditions that can worsen CB19. Stop right there. Did you please understand what you just heard? They want it tested on who? Come on, everybody. Listen to that. Ethnic and racial minorities. So what do we see going on right now with BLM and everything going on? They think that, oh, the government's behind them. Look at they're doing all this for us. No, you're all part of the plan. Who else? Pregnant women. How horrible, right? They're going to take the chance to put their freaking poison inside a pregnant woman. That's in the testing phase. That blew me away right there that they'll come out and say that, that they're going to test on a pregnant woman. Not put their, so, you know, their approved vax in a pregnant woman. They're going to test their poison on a pregnant woman. That's sick. And then who else? The elderly and people with underlying medical conditions that can worsen CB19, those are the same people that have been, 
in the forefront. It's the same ones that they're always going after. You see this repeatedly over and over again, them going after the weak, the ill, the elderly, etc. While the effort is coming together quickly, the process is following the same strict protocols required of all VAX developers. The guidelines for these trials are really clear. They will be scientifically rigorous and there are no shortcuts, Bloom said, which isn't true. We already know with Trump's Operation Warp Speed that they are cutting all kinds of corners. So when they come out and say this, they know they're blatantly lying. Phase 3 clinical trials come only only after months of other tests that first begin in cells and then moves on to animals. Yeah, there you go. That's so nice, right? Test your poison on animals. So, so. These are the people that everybody trusts. These are the people that you're following and listening to and trusting them, telling you to wear a mask, you to take their backs, you to stay home, you to not be able to go see your family. If one of your family members die, you can't have the funeral. You... You can't go see your grandma or your grandpa if they're in an elderly home right now. Are you kidding me? You're allowing these type of people to do that? And we're the ones that don't know? We're the ones that don't do our research or don't do our investigation into this stuff? I mean, all the information's there. The only ones that don't understand are the ones that don't look for themselves. Only if all goes well with animal tests has the process moved to humans. Yeah. So how many times does it not go well? <laughs> I bet you if you talk to, you know, all your animal activists and said, well, well, those same people that you're backing up about these masks are doing this to all these animals. Hmm. Oh, they're just mice. Or they're just rats. Or they're just something else, right? Makes it okay, I guess. Because they're doing it for, guess what, your own greater good. That's where they always come full circle. That's their answer to everything. Well, of course they're having to do that. They have to do those tests because if they don't, we're all going to die. <laughs> 140,000 people in over seven months. Yep, you do the math. In phase one trials, the goal is to determine any immediate adverse effects. This is done through tests in a small number of healthy people, generally fewer than 100. For example, for phase one trial of the Moderna Vax candidate, 45 people took part. 45 people, right? So there you go. You take 45 people and they go out and they spread it. Not you and me by not wearing a mask. Phase two trials expand the safety testing and look at dosing how high a dose can be given before there are adverse effects. Typically, several dose levels are tested. In addition, these trials look to see if the vax causes an immune response in the subject. They could end up including several hundred people and expand to include older subjects. Phase three trials begin when it is clear the vax doesn't cause immediate adverse effects and appears to provoke an immune response. Wow, right? If it doesn't show immediate adverse effects, so if uh, it starts killing you a year down the road, that's okay. And it only needs to appear to provoke an immune response. I mean, I'm glad that their, um, you know, their restrictions are so vigorous right there, right? The goal is to see if the vax actually protects the subject against getting CB19, or if they do get it, causes the illness to be less severe. Now, you remember the video that I just did a couple days ago when they admitted that their vax is most likely still not going to be, it's not going to be a cure-all. Number one, they're admitting that it may be 60% accurate just to start with. That's when it works. And when it works, they're admitting now that it may not stop any of the infections. It just may stop the worst parts of their CV19. Okay, so it'll stop, you know, the massive breathing that they say or death. But you're still going to get everything else and you're still going to get the infection. That came straight from them. I'll leave that link to my video that I covered that on that. That is not me saying it. That is them. And I will leave that link. So if you want to check that out, watch that video, please. These will be large trials. Each vax needs to be tested on about 30,000 
volunteers. Dr. Francis Collins, director of the NIH, said in June, We don't believe that we have enough power in the analysis to be able to document the VAX works unless you get it to roughly that number. See? So they, that, that, that's their story, right? Or that's their, you know, that's their information. If they don't put it into at least 30,000 people, they can't figure out their tests. They can't make sure, you know, they don't know if it's going to work or not. Half the participants will get the Vax candidate and the other half will get a placebo. A lot of people drop out right there. They say, no, I don't want it if I don't get the Vax. <laughs> that just does not even make any sense because it's not even it's not even approved yet, you know, to these people that do believe it. This is a testing Vax, so you are so sure. I mean, I, I guess the people are that deceived, so maybe, maybe. Um Part of the work of the clinical trial workers is overcoming such hesitation. People in the control group, the ones who act, who don't actually get the vax, are vital to understanding if the real vax works. Without them, you can't proceed, he said. Researchers take care that participants understand what they're signing up for. Oh, here we go. This it was part of that that I was talking about earlier in this video. Here we go. I didn't know it was in this article. I thought it was in another one that I was reading. Check this out. First, there is an initial intake interview, which might be done over the phone or online. Those who are chosen must go through a, a consent process, okay? The informed consent agreement can run 50 to 100 pages. 50 to 100 pages, the consent form. The average consent form takes anywhere from between 30 to 60 minutes to go through. You need to spend time with people. Give them time to have things explained and ask questions. Yeah, I bet you you really explain everything in that to them. I bet you you do. I bet you you tell them maybe they should have a lawyer go look at this too, right? Yeah, I bet you don't. And then listen to this. This was really, really, this is important. Participants might be asked not just for their medical histories, but also the names, addresses, and phone number of the volunteer's friends family, and neighbors, as well as information about their social media accounts. Okay, the information collected about friends, families, help researchers find participants if they lose track of them to ask if they still want to take part in the study. BS. Does that not sound like contact tracing? Right? Think about this right now. They do these clinical trials, okay? They do these VAX tests, okay? They put this into them. Now, who do they want all the information on? Everybody that they're going to come into contact with. So guess who's getting the phone call? My neighbor goes and does a vaccine trial. He now gives up my number and everyone else around us. Now, guess who gets the phone on the call saying you've been exposed to CV? Hmm, that lines up pretty good, doesn't it? The CV19 VAX trials won't last for months, but years. Really? It's going to last for years. Wow. As researchers watch for long-term side effects, so staying in touch is crucial. So are you going to wait the years before you start giving it to millions of people? I mean, come on. We already know they already have these things already. Ugh. All right, let's just keep going. Sorry. There are all sorts of people who drop out. They lose interest. They move. They get a new cell phone. These are their ex see, those are their reasonings why they need every they need your friends, your neighbors, your family's information. Really, they're the damn government. They can look up your information in five seconds. That has nothing to do with looking you up. Do the police need that? No, they'll come find you. And you don't think the government can? That is the biggest BS excuse I've ever heard to get all your information from all your family, friends, anybody that lives next to you, etc., etc. That is a tracking and tracing implementation tool right there. That's all that is. Listen to this. While it's unethical to pay volunteers large sums of money to take part in clinical trials, volunteers can expect to be compensated for their time and effort. What other trials will offer isn't known, but the Moderna Phase 1 trial, which launched in March, offered participants $100 for each in-person visit they completed. Those who attended all 11 planned visits over a 14-month period could receive a total of $1,100. $1,100 to have this poison tested on you. You know, do we think it's kind of ironic that 
All this happens in March, correct? And, you know, then this all takes off. You know, come on. You know, look at right now. They're testing at a massive rate. We, we know those tests are not good. And you clearly see how they're doing it. People are voluntarily allowing them to spread this and take control. The real cost is the medical staff who recruit, interview, and track all the participants. Did you hear that? And track. There you go. See, they, they give their little bits of truth in there. It typically costs several hundred dollars per participant in staff time alone. For a clinical trial with 30,000 people in it, that's upwards of $6 million. Every person who drops out means another must be added. Maybe everyone that dies or everyone that gets sick or everyone that comes to their senses and decides not to continue to go on. Six million dollars of guess whose money? Ours. Tax money. And everything else they steal from you. Running a large clinical trial is complex and finding the right mix of volunteers is often challenging and can take months. But Hyatt thinks the CV19 trials will be different. Why? Why? Why do you think it's going to be different unless you know it's different? Because you know the plan. The altruistic aspect of this is appealing, he said. People want to be part of the cure. I've talked about that. That's the sad part because you have so many that are running to volunteer just because they truly do not know the truth and they truly are trying to go and help. That is the sad part. Those are the people that I feel the worst for because they're not the ones that are fighting back against us. That's not them. Those are the ones that are just truly looking out for, you know, the betterment of the people that they love. And that's sad because the government is using that against him. It's using that against them. And not only are they not helping their family, their friends, they're hurting themselves and also hurting their family and friends. And that's the sad part. Everyone, I will leave the links to this article in the description. I hope each and every one of you are doing well today. And just, you know, just remember that we're in this together. Um, no, no matter what, if any of you need to talk to somebody, send me an email, please. My email is in the description. And um, leave a comment. I try to answer every comment that I can. You know, I am a single dad, so I, you know, sometimes I don't have the time, but... I'm doing the best that I can because I do truly enjoy talking to each one of you and, you know, just continue to pray against this. We, we will beat this. I hope each one of you has a great day. We'll talk to you soon. God bless.